one who, who succumbs on the table has to, by law, has to have a, a knockout. So he closed him up briefly, just a couple, three wires here and, and a big stitch to close his soft tissue. Well, the machine that records the blood pressure and the pulse and the left atrial pressure and all the monitoring lines and things continued to run the paper out onto the floor in a big heat. Nobody bothered to turn it off. And then uh, we put down a transesophageal echo probe which is just a long tube that has a microphone on the end of it, and we can get a beautiful picture on a monitor of the heart beating. Well, that machine was left on, and the tape, the VCR tape, continued to run. Right. Well, uh, the assistant surgeon and I uh, went in and took our gowns off and gloves and and masks and things, and came back, and we were in our short sleeve shirts, and we were standing at the door, kind of discussing if there was anything else we could have done, any other medicines we could have given, whatever, to have made this a success. Um, and as we were standing there, it had been at least 20 minutes. And, you know, I don't know this exact time sequence, but it was close to 20, 25 minutes that this man recorded no heartbeat, no blood pressure, um, and the echo showing no movement of the heart, sitting. And um, all of a sudden we looked up, and the surgical assistant had just finished closing him, and we saw some electrical activity. And pretty soon the electrical activity turned into a heartbeat. Very slow, 30, 40 a minute. And we thought, well, that's kind of an agonal thing, and we see that occasionally that the heart will continue to beat even though the patient can't generate a blood pressure or pump any blood. Well, pretty soon, we look and he's actually generating a pressure. One more search. No, we're not doing anything. I mean, the machines are all shut off and we're stopped all the medicines and all that. And so I start yelling. Get anesthesia back in here and uh, get the nurses. And to, to make a very long story short, without putting him back on cardiopulmonary bypass, heart lung machine and stuff, we started giving him some medicines and anesthesia started giving him oxygen and pretty soon he had a blood pressure of 80 and Pretty soon, a blood pressure of 100, and his heart rate was now up to 100 a minute. Now, he recovered and had no neurologic deficit. And for the next 10 days, two weeks, all of us went in and were talking to him about what he experienced, if anything. And he talked about the bright light at the end of the tunnel, uh, as I recall, and so on. But the thing that astounded me was that he described that operating room floating around and saying, I saw you and Dr. Catania standing in the doorway with your arms folded talking. I saw the, I didn't know where the anesthesiologist was, but he came running back in. And I saw all of these post-its 
sitting on this TV screen. And what those were, were any call I got, the nurse would write down who called and the phone number and stick it on the monitor, and then the next post-it would stick to that post-it, and then I'd have a string of post-its and phone calls I had to make. He described that. I mean, there's no way he could have described that before the operation because it didn't have any calls. No. Right? And, and he's sitting on... And lying he's, on the... So he must have been floating. He was up there. Yeah. He described the scene uh, things that there is no way he knew. I mean, he didn't wake up in the operating room and see all this. No. I mean, he was out. Right. And was out for, well, I don't know, even a day or two. Right. While right. we while we recovered him in the intensive care unit. So what does that tell you? What does, what does that tell you? Was that his soul up there? It's hard to know. But it, 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 certainly, it, it, it certainly brings that possibility into play. It always makes me very emotional. There have been other instances, like one other I remember so vividly, was a guy who was on uh, anticoagulation, uh, medicines that keep you from clotting. And I, I don't even remember the operation or whatever, but we had to do him right away. And you try and reverse that as much as possible, but it's impossible to completely do it. And we were in there and we finished the surgery and we just simply could not stop this person from bleeding. Right. I mean, we pulled out every gun in the armory right. to try and get this. Everything you could possibly do. Yeah, and we finally decided we're not going to be able to stop this bleeding. Right. And all of a sudden, nobody spoke. Because everybody in that room felt a presence. Right. And, I mean, the anesthesiologist and I talked about it afterwards. I mean, there was no question. There was a presence in that room. Right. And he stopped bleeding just like that. How do you explain that? What What, what is your take on that, Dr. Rudy? Oh. Unexplainable. There's something out there that, you know, people with faith, believers, is there. Some people call it God, some people call it other things, Buddha or Muhammad or whoever. Um, it has convinced me there is something out there. Something out there. It is so good of you to share this with people who don't get the opportunity to be at those near-death or post-death experiences. I don't know. It, it just convinces you that the strings are being handle up it so here I mean you know absolutely and it makes me very emotional I can tell uh, it does me as well <laughs> and I'm so pleased that you would share this with these people in this video who just don't get that opportunity is there any last thing that you'd like to say well just that I presented this case to 13 other cardiac surgeons throughout the country in a special meeting and um, they had had several, you know, several similar experiences, not quite as dramatic as the one I had, but, but everybody that deals with that every day has had those experiences. So it's not, it's not just me. Right. Okay. So, Dr. Ruby, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah.
no te lo botal. Ah, que te subo. 